We're here to share with you inspiring stories that bring to life all the little and big ways that people bring more love, joy, laughter, and humanness to everyday life. Our focus is the hunt for those little moments that refuel the human soul and reminds us what life is really all about. I invite you to sit back, enjoy the moments, enjoy the stories, the adventures, and the journeys. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of What the World Needs More Of. This is Jarek Robbins and I'm here with our special guest, Corey Corpodian. Corey, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me on the show. I'm very excited. So Corey, I'm curious, to start off, what do you believe the world needs more of? You know, it's a, a great, great question. And I really, truly believe that the world needs a lot more leadership. Um, we are in a society where people struggle constantly looking for answers. And I think that we need better leaders and we also really truly need to lead ourselves. And when I say that, I, I really, really mean that we have to lead by example. And I think that comes down to, I guess it's kind of twofold. What we really, really need is um, to improve our emotional intelligence and something that I talk about a lot is emotional fitness and people will call it, you know, your mindset, um, how you handle yourself. But by leading our own minds, we're able to, I think, better lead the world. I love that. I love that. And, and I'd love to get to know more about you in this process to figure out what brought you to that and, and, and what helped shape that. So my, my next question is, what's your wow factor? What makes you uniquely you? And uh, what are maybe a couple life moments that help shape that for you? Oh, boy, where to begin? I mean, um, I think, uh, you know, for for people who, who know me um, would probably say I'm a pretty intense guy. Uh, I have a lot of big goals and aspirations. And um, I think that when I fall in love with something or I say I'm going to do something, that I follow through, you know, for me, commitment is doing something even when you don't want to do it. Um, it's not something like, Oh, I, I think I want to try this. And so kind of in every area of my life, um, when I said I was going to do something, whether it was go to dental school, uh, when I was, you know, a kid at 13 years old, I said, I'm going to be an orthodontist. And I committed to that and followed through. Um, now I think uh, you need some flexibility in life cause I kind of went a little too far and I probably should have paused and said, is this what I really want in life? Um, <laughs> and then I did it with fitness. I competed in men's physique and, and ended up winning my first contest and, um, went all the way to nationals and just, you know, uh, I take it to the extreme. I want to learn everything about the, whatever I'm working on. Um, and then finally for my, like kind of like my biggest breakthrough in life was personal development for me. Um, Something that I know you shared is that, you know, a lot of people don't even know this type of information. And I spent 27 years of my life with a set of beliefs, a set of uh, thoughts and habits that really um, I thought was the only way that the world could work. And in reality, there were so many different ways to, quote unquote, be successful. See, I've been kind of obsessed with success. And when I was younger, I defined success as money. Um, and quickly realized that that is not everything in life. And, um, you know, the shift came when I went into personal development and I started mastering my mindset and why I love calling it emotional fitness is because I spent all this time in the gym, sculpting my muscles, you know, working out, winning these competitions. And I'm thinking to myself, why didn't anybody tell me to train my mind? Why didn't anybody tell me to ask better questions to that? what I focus on is a choice that my thoughts that come through, like I don't have to hold on to worry, fear or depression, which I was depressed for eight years. And so that was like the biggest thing for me and kind of what I really want to share with the world, um, was that shift. And it, it came from 
a lot of negative experiences, unfortunately. It was a lot of pain. I had some family issues. I, you know, I was over almost a million dollars in student loan debt and, um, I was massively depressed and on paper I was supposed to be successful. I I was supposed to fit in this box of success and I struggled. I struggled so much, like not wanting to do what I was doing. I spent 10 years of my life, almost a million dollars to be an orthodontist. And I was like, I don't think this is what I want to do. Um, I still am an orthodontist, although now I, you know, do the podcast unleash success and do motivational speaking. And I really, really enjoy that. That lights me alive. And I've found ways to enjoy um, orthodontics as well from the business side of things, from helping people. And it all started with by really shifting my mindset. Um, I'd have to say the biggest like kind of moment that really shaped that was uh, when I, um, I was 27 years old. I had just finished a national competition and got first call outs. You know, it's like I was like top five or six, um, which was a big deal because I'd only been in it for nine months. Um, but it was literally everything that I had. I was just throwing everything into the gym. It was my meditation. It was my sanctuary. It was how I got away from the problems of struggling financially, driving three hours a day to work in San Diego. I was living at home. My parents' marriage, unfortunately, was failing. There was a lot of financial troubles and my mindset was horrible. I just, I lived and breathed depression. I woke up depressed. I went to bed depressed. And then unfortunately, alcohol was like the only thing that made me feel better, but that's not really a good habit to get into to make yourself feel better. Um, when and so when I, you're already I, feeling down, uh, exactly using, using a downer and a depressant never helps. <laughs> and yeah, when I wasn't competing, it was like, what do I do with all this time at the gym? Let me just go drink some alcohol. No, that is not the way to do it. Now I have a couple of drinks every now and then I have some fun, but you know, when I was doing it with that motive, it was, uh, really dangerous. And so I go to the doctor, you know, I had this mole on my chest that I kind of know and I'd been through dental school. I got some basics and I looked at it and uh, it doesn't look right. Well, it took me a year and a half to actually go to the dermatologist. I walk in, they're like, oh yeah, we need to biopsy that. Oh, no big deal. But they're like, you can't work out for two weeks. Oh my God. Okay. Let's get this done. I come back in two weeks and they tell me that I've got skin cancer and I'm like, all right, we'll just cut out the little tiny mole. No, no, no. We need to cut out like a three inch chunk of your chest. I was like, whoa, what's the recovery time on this? Like, I'm trying to go pro guys. Let's calm down. Um, And they're like, you're probably gonna be out of the gym for three months. And to me, the gym was everything I had. So this was just like the last straw. But it didn't hit me how severe it was until I asked the question. I was like, well, can I wait? And they said, no, if you wait six months, you'll probably lose half your chest a year. It'll spread your entire body. It was like, just holy shit. Right. I'm 27 years old. Like I, I've got life, you know, all this life to live. And it really shook me to my core. Um, I think something about facing our mortality, you know, even though I wasn't dying on the side of a road or something, but just the thought that if I hadn't come in, you know, if I had waited another year, what would have happened? And uh, from that moment, I went looking for change and I found it in the personal development world. I found the biggest thing was that I had a choice. I was like, what do you mean I have a choice? I can, I can choose what I believe that my beliefs are based on experiences that I can change. And, um, you know, it's kind of been, (laughs) I mean, luckily all uphill ever since, but I, I approached it like fitness. I approached it like training my mind every single day. I, I love that. That's quite a journey from using that intense factor that made you who you are to having giant goals and aspirations to becoming an orthodontist and checking off the boxes yet feeling like it was an it and 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 if anything feeling worse at the end than you did in the beginning diving into men's fitness as your outlet using personal development and and that pivotal moment of of someone telling you like you said facing death facing mortality having someone say hey if you would have waited a year who knows what would have happened and and that's wild that's wild, and and that's powerful. I think what you said there at the end of we have a choice it is, like I said, there's 6.7 billion people on this planet who've been never been told that. You grew up in this place, you're in this family, you work this job, you do these things because that's what people like us do, and and they get stuck into that pattern, and they don't realize there's other options. And and a lot of times in people's worlds, it doesn't feel like there's any other options to be honest. Um, you know, in, in journeys around the world, you see that it doesn't look like there's another option. But to, to wake up one day and say, wow, I do have a choice. I can find another option it is one of the most empowering moments of someone's life. That's very powerful. Speaking yeah. of empowering moments, 
What about a humble moment? What, what's a moment in your life that made you feel incredibly humble? Um, there's been quite a few. Uh, it's okay. Most of us have many. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, life serves you know, them up. If you're not, if you, if you don't, if you feel like you haven't had any, just pay attention. Life will serve something up for you. <laughs> Oh yeah. Always, always. I'm going to pick two. Um, just because one of the biggest things that I never realized when I was, had my head down and I was so focused and so driven towards working towards my goals was kind of the effect that I had on people. Um, and I really didn't just believe that, you know, people would say, Oh, Corey, like you're really inspiring. And this was down when I was, you know, down in the dumps and I was like, Oh, you know, they're just saying that to be nice. Um, but some of the, you know, positive traits that I took from my parents and some of the positive habits that I grabbed from them was commitment and hard work. And people really, um, were inspired by that. And I just never realized the influence until I started doing motivational speaking. And, uh, I remember one time I did a talk in the Dominican Republic and it was just so incredible. You know, there's like six, 700 people there. And afterwards I was hanging out with my girlfriend and I was just like, everybody was coming up to me like, Hey man, like, what's your story? Like, we want to talk to you. We want to, you know, how can we be more like you? Like, wh how'd you get into this emotional fitness? This is so awesome. And I don't know, like I've never, I mean, I, I've, I've had friends and I've had people, but to have so many people come up to me and just say, thank you. And like, stop me. And I, I, you know, six, seven hundred people, you can't see all their faces. Um, and I just was like, so overwhelmed with, um, gratitude and it's crazy because, and this is the reason why I bring this up. I'm sitting on this Island in the Dominican Republic and we're on the nice side of it, Punta Cana. And literally 10 years before that, I was doing a, um, outreach for dentistry in dental school. And I remember looking out at that same ocean, but I was on the on the not so nice side. I was on Santiago where it was just like, you know, people needed health care and we were down there and we had, you know, armed guard protection and everything. And we were doing it in the school with barbed wire all around the school. There's no running water, you know, rolling blackouts. I mean, it was just pretty different. But at the time I was so depressed and I was so miserable and I was trying to do this whole dental school thing and I was forcing myself to go down this road. And I remember looking out the ocean 10 years before thinking, like, what's my life about? Like, what is this? What's my purpose? Like, am I really doing what I'm meant to do? And fast forward 10 years, I'm sitting on the beach with my girlfriend. There's like not a soul in sight after all these people have said thank you and, you know, kind of giving me so much love. And I look out at the ocean and it just clicked. And I was like, no way. I can't believe it's been 10 years. And in that moment, I was like, this is what I'm meant to do. This is my purpose. Hmm. Um, so that's one was pretty just interesting, like how it all came full circle. And, you know, the second one is just um, I'm, I'm just going to say the the appreciation that, um, and love that kind of my sisters give me, you know, every now and then when we have a big, um, family, you know, get together and our families have trials and tribulations just like anybody else. Um, just, just the love, just the absolute love. My sister turned 30 this past year and, um, you know, I gave a little speech and she just looked at me, said, I love you. And, looked at my other sister and, um, we just sat there and no matter what happens in life, uh, we'll always have each other. We came from, you know, we've had ups and downs financially, but I believe we came from fairly humble beginnings. You know, my parents worked really hard for everything they earned and there's been a lot of ups and downs and just always looking at them too. It grounds you. Um, it really, you know, instead of kind of, uh, Oh, let's buy the big house. Let's, you know, work really hard. Let's get all these accolades. No, when I look at family, that's what's most important, no matter what we have or don't have. You know, we moved around so many times as a kid, just chasing money. Oh, we got to leave California. Oh, we got to leave Vegas. Oh, we got to move on. You know, I spent eight weeks in Indiana just 
because of financial difficulties. But it was like every time we looked at each other, we have we have each other. And so no matter how high we achieve, no matter how high we go up, um, it always kind of grounds me to know that they're there. That's beautiful. It's amazing how the ones we love have the ability to bring us all the way back to just a breath that reminds us of what's most important in life. And, you know, saying, saying a speech at someone's birthday or, or, you know, just picking up the phone and dialing someone you love and talking to them for a few minutes. It's amazing how it brings us right back to life. Very cool. Absolutely. Very cool. What about an awe-inspiring moment? Something where, you know, you might have seen it or experienced it or heard it, and it's almost like your jaw hits the ground. you got to sweep it back up, and you're just thinking, wow, wow. What's one of those moments throughout life? <laughs> so many. Um, <laughs> uh, hmm. Um. You know, I'm trying, I don't want to go down like a sad time. I would pick a happy one, actually. I was, I was interviewing Tom Bilyeu, who's one of the co-founders of Quest Nutrition and Impact Theory. And, um, oh, it's going to like choke me up like it did on the interview. Uh, he was talking about how much he loved his wife. And in that moment, there's something about absolute true love. I think true love is the most beautiful thing in the world. And without a doubt, it heals everything. I mean, it is just the most amazing source of energy I've ever seen. And he's talking about how much he loves his wife. And my girlfriend was over there in the background, or, you know, watching this and listening. And we're at his studio. And as he says this, I look over to her and I kind of give her a little wink and he catches me and I'm like, oh my God. And it was a moment where I saw how the power of his true love radiated towards me and gave me love. And I just think that if we spread love, spread positivity more often, the world would be a better place. It's true. It's, it's true. Moments of love bring out the strength inside of humans that they didn't know existed prior. And, and it brings out the courage to, to be a version of yourself you never knew was possible. And it brings out um, the you know, levels of caring that you didn't even know you had. And, and, and when you're able to build that kind of relationship with someone and, and truly pour your heart and soul into it, it's amazing, amazing what happens to someone's life. And what's wild is the opposite is true too. You could have everything in the world. And if you don't have someone special to share it with, it doesn't feel like much over time. You know, Jarek, I just one thing I, I one thing that kind of blew me away when I first started dating my girlfriend is that we were going to a baseball game, and as we're walking by, you know, everybody's got our hands full. As we're walking by, this group of people, you know, a few um, were a little elderly. One man had a cane, and there's a group of like eight people, and I kind of saw it too, but he drops his cane. And everybody in this group just kind of stares at it and like watches. And my girlfriend like literally takes a 90 degree turn, walks right into the group and picks up the cane for the gentleman. And I was like, wow, like you don't even know him. All his friends were standing there. And this is something so simple. And I didn't say it till later in our relationship. But that moment was just like compassion and love for people. Like, I'm a good person. I'm, you know, this person dropped it. Let me help you. And, uh, you know, that was one of the things that really attracted me to her in the beginning. And our love has been growing ever since. Ah, that's beautiful. Here's a crazy question. It's not in my list here, but I'm going to throw it out there. How did you know she was the one? You know, um, I had a lot of really bad relationships and kind of just manipulative and everything. Um, I'd have to say, uh, <laughs> the first time, um, we started dating within a month, I was like, I, I want to take you somewhere. I want to do something amazing. I want to do something fun, something we've never done, you know, before. And I was like, let's fly up to Napa. And she's like, 
I just met you. Like, I don't want to like, she kind of was nervous about flying up there and like going away so far. And I was like, okay, okay. What about driving? Which was just better in her mind for whatever reason to Santa Barbara. And so I go through this whole thing. Like I find a nice hotel, like close to the beach, um, to go wine tasting in Santa Barbara. And, uh, I'd have to say we woke up the next morning and for whatever reason, the yoga parfait there was amazing. You know, um, we had had wine the night before, wake up, the yoga parfait is delicious. We have all this breakfast. We're sitting on the balcony overlooking the ocean in our bathrobes and, uh, you know, taking silly pictures and just, uh, you know, it all came together right then. And that was about a month into our relationship. Um, but it was just someone who I could, sh I knew I could share my life with. I knew could a, I'm kind of a hard person to keep up with. And, and the fact that she's been able to handle me over the last three years is incredible. Um, and be someone who's so loving and compassionate and see, I just, I could be myself around. I could have fun. I could be this intense, crazy guy. And, you know, just, I, at the, at my heart, man, I just, I'm, I'm a big lover and I'm romantic and I want to be like just cuddle. And I know that sounds cheesy, but with her, I could be all of them at the same time. And it was beautiful. Oh, that's amazing. I can definitely hear your spirit and all the love you have for her. With love, there's also fear. So I'm curious. And it doesn't always have to coexist. But many times, you know, when you're deeply in love, there's things that pop up that kind of freak you out. And, and, hopefully about a different subject than your relationship, but what's your greatest fear? Um, it's so interesting because a lot of times in my head, just even hearing that, I'm like, oh, you know, like I, I have a knee jerk reaction of like, oh, I shouldn't be afraid of anything, you know? Um, but I think the truth is that my biggest fear is not not sharing my message with enough people in this world. Mm. Um, I lived my life in so much pain for so long, mental, emotional pain. You know, I've had physical pain. I've had financial difficulties and nothing, nothing like the horrors and tragedies that other people have had in this world. But when you're in that mental and emotional pain, it is so bad to you. And I understand that it's so hard to get out of. And I just think that I figured out a way and, you know, I'm all about training your mind. And my biggest fear is that I'm not going to be able to help enough people. Like, you know, when I almost died and recently my cousin passed away and it was like, oh, my God, like I don't have enough time. Like I've got work to do. Like I've got this. This is what I need to do in life. This is what I need to spread this this emotional fitness, this ability, this choice, this, this training of our mind is something that's so important. And, and for me, it's not like I've got to reach, you know, a million or a billion people. Um, but that like, I don't know, like I look at people who commit suicide and to say that I didn't have suicidal thoughts, I mean, that'd just be a lie. Like they'd cross my mind, of course, but it happens to a lot of us, you know, at points in our life. Um, I never took action on it and I never would anymore. You know, it's like, I'm, I've, I've chosen a different path. And I think that what breaks my heart is hearing about these stories and these kids in Palo Alto who commit suicide. We had a young kid in, in Newport Beach who committed suicide and he wrote letters of like, it's not your fault to his parents, to the school. And he actually blamed like the pressure of, of school. Um, it's just that kind of stuff. I, I feel it so bad. And my greatest fear is that I've got, I've got this recipe, I've got this training program. And if I don't spread it to more people, you know, like my, my life won't have meant something. Um, and so I'm actually working on a book on it, which is, you know, I've, I've written, we were on the second draft and I'm just going through it for kind of like final edits and stuff. But, um, and that's just one medium to do it. I personally enjoy public speaking, uh, and podcasting, but, um, I think that the biggest dilemma of the next 10, 20 years is going to be mental. I mean, we're going to, you know, maybe universal basic income, uh, or universal basic income, 
um, you know, healthcare is getting better. The world's going to get, you know, running water. We're going to be able to keep spreading this to people. Now the problem becomes now that I don't need, you know, need a fight to survive in this world. Now I've got to sit with my feelings. How does that work? You know, like, do I feel good enough? Am I doing what I'm meant to do? And, and in America that plagues, you know, 40, 50% of the population, um, where they're struggling mentally. And, uh, so my biggest fear is that I don't get that message out to enough people, I guess. Hmm. Speaking of the future, here's a crazy thought. What are you most excited about for that future? Oh, uh, one of the things about having a lot of goals is sometimes I'm like, I just keep ticking them off the list and I have to remember to celebrate. Um, but I'd have to say that I currently, I mean, I love the podcast. I love speaking, but to get this book out in the next realistically three to six months, um, would probably be the most exciting thing. And, you know, I, I, I took a lot more time with this book than I thought because I really wanted it to actually be good. I don't want it to be, I don't want to like go buy a bestseller, or, you know, like, have everybody buy it within the first hour on Amazon. So it just jumps up. I mean, I probably would still ask all my friends to do that just to get it, you know, more awareness, but I want to create something that people read and learn from. So I'm most excited about delivering that book to the world. That's awesome. Now we're going to switch gears a little and, and jump into something we call nuts and bolts. And th th this is some practical stuff for people and, and everything you've shared has been practical and useful thus far, but this is more nitty gritty practical stuff people can use and immediately apply from listening to this. And so the question to start with is uh, first here, what do you focus the majority of your life on each day? Meaning where do you pour the most of your time into? Great question. And I love uh, how we take action. Um, I'm, th I'm thinking about this because I, you know, I spend a lot of time working, you would say, but hands down, uh, it's something that I do almost unconsciously, but especially when I'm getting out of my comfort zone. So like working out, that's only an hour, um, you know, I really spend a lot of time in my own mind um, doing a couple of different things, either learning, either training, kind of refocusing my mind or, um, you know, planning kind of like what I want for the future and then just being grateful. Like I spend a lot of time, I guess, thinking you could say, <laughs> uh, but to me, it's more of a, it prepares me to be able to better handle everything throughout the day, whether it's. Uh, a disagreement at work on way, how we should do things, whether it's handling patients, whether it's um, preparing for a speech or doing a business deal. Um, as long as I'm mentally sound, uh, I, I handle everything better. And so I actually, I constantly re revisit my mental state um, on a daily basis, on a like hourly basis. You know, I mean, anytime I need it, anytime I'm going into it, it's kind of like I live and breathe emotional fitness. Wow, that's powerful. And, and here's a question. What's the key to your success in spending so much time there? Obviously, it sounds like you've built a powerhouse mental edge, but, but what's, the, what's the key to your success in all that? Um, consistently doing a better strategy, I would say. Because you know everybody says consistency is key, which I say it all the time too. But a better strategy, especially when you talk about the mental mindset and your emotions and how you feel and how you attack life. If I want to be focused, but all I do is focus on being worried that I'm not going to do a good enough job and let that worry kind of run me around in circles, you know, worrying is like a rocking chair, gives you something to do, but it doesn't get you anywhere. Um, I look at it's it's consistently using a better strategy. Like it, we talked about, you know, focus and, and using breathing techniques and making sure you're focusing on the right thing. So for me, some ways I kind of shift my focus is, and I it happens to everybody, just the way we're wired at times when you're stressed out, when you're, you know, at your limit, you say something to your head like, man, I just can't handle this. And I think to myself, wait a second. 
is that true? Can I truly not handle this? I've done it before. You know, I can do it again, whether it's in relationships, whether it's in business, whether it's in fitness even, you know, can I really go to the gym again? And so I always ask myself a question like, hey, is that really true? Or, you know, if I was honest with myself and then I ask myself a different question, uh, it's the age old, age old uh, you know, comment like, oh, I can't afford that car. No, no. How can you afford that car? And I said, OK, you know, if maybe I'm thinking about me, you know, how can I look at this in a different way to shift my perspective to think about them? Or, you know, is there some way that I can do it? And if you have that belief where no matter what happens, you'll always find a way. And for me, it really stems from my parents. And they I'm so lucky they drilled this into me. It was Corey. As long as you work hard enough, you can achieve anything. And so for me, anytime I struggle, I just consistently work harder. But I found you want to use better strategies. So better strategies. Now, now here's a question. Considering better strategies, what's one actionable tip that people can use to experience that kind of success in their life? So to experience those kind of better strategies, what's something people could do every day? So listen, when you wake up in the morning, um, you know, in – you're going to work or whatever. So for I think that you have to like prime yourself for the day. For me, that immediately starts out with working out. Uh, I it gets my breathing up, it gets my mind up. You know, it's something good for my body. It makes me feel good. Uh, I also a lot of times will do a to like refocus myself. I'll do a power action list. Why is it a power action list? Because the word power makes me feel empowered. I'm taking action and the, it's a list, but I really only keep it to three max five things. And those are the three things that I know I need to do today in order to further ahead my goals. Uh, one of the things I believe in is the 80, 20 rule. So 80% of our results come from roughly 20% of our actions. The key is which actions do we take? So I write down the things, not that like, you know, still need to be done, you know, maybe paying bills is something that needs to be done, but if it could be done later or tomorrow, okay, great. But what's something that's going to get me closer to my goal right now? Um, you still pay your bills, of course, but I write down those three things. And as long as I accomplish those three things in that day, I'm significantly further ahead. And then finally, um, I'd say is really focusing uh, and visualizing kind of what you want your day to be. Um, it's almost like, you know, for athletes and I did this all the time playing football and basketball as a kid, uh, I would constantly think about game day, how it was going to go, what the play was going to do, what the defense was going to do, how I'd react if the defense, you know, was going to change, if they'd go right or left, if they'd cut me out of the hole, like I'd have to bounce out. Okay. Now this, I give them a little quick shake and I'd rehearse this in my head constantly. So I was visualizing this. And I literally do that with everything that I do as simple things like working out. I visualize what I'm going to do before I actually do it. I see my muscles growing as things like motivational speaking. When I go up there, I visualize the end. What what's going to happen at the end? What people are going to say to me? I think about that. I think about how the crowd's going to react. Um, I visualize how this podcast is going to go. I'm like, all right, I have no idea what you're going to ask me, Jarek, but I know that you know, I'm going to answer with my heart. I'm going to answer with some, you know, awesome tools and tips. I'm just going to bring it and, and set myself up for success. And at the end, I know, I don't know if you're going to say it, but I visualize that you're like, Corey, that was a really awesome podcast. Like in my head, I've run through what this looks like. Just, you know, it, it, sometimes I'm like dreaming about it. So I think visualization and clearly defining like what you want and working through that in your head and even what might happen that, kind of throws you off a little bit and how you're going to jump back in. I think that is one of the biggest keys to success. I, I love it. So your power action list, looking for that 80, 20 using focus and mentally visualizing exactly how you want it to go and using that mental rehearsal to envision exactly what's going to happen and then allow your body to find its way to making that vision a reality. I love it. Yes. No, and I'm, one, I'm, oh, go ahead. One, one last thing, because I, as I hear you say it back to me, um, these are all things that go on in our head and where the rubber meets the road is action because the only way to get real results is taking real action in the world. So the minute you put that power action list down, you've rehearsed it, 
Some people freeze. You just got to go. Don't think about it. Just do it. I, I love it. Someone told me there's a simple formula. Five, four, three, two, one, go, go, go. And with 20 <laughs> seconds of insane courage, you can change your entire life. I, I was laughing. That's one of my favorite quotes from, uh, what is it? We had a zoo, the movie. Uh, 20 oh seconds my of God. insane courage will change your whole life. Walking across the room and talking to that person you've always wanted to. It's magical. Well, I think you visualized right, sir, because I'm going to say, Corey, this was an amazing podcast. Thank you for sharing with us. Thank you for joining us. Uh, for everyone who chose to tune in and listen, thank you for spending a little bit of life with us. Hopefully, this brought some love, joy, happiness, and, and, and soul food back into your day. Um, and I look forward to seeing everyone next episode. Corey, thanks again. Thank you, Jarek, so much. Appreciate it. 